Hey gang, and welcome back to another video here on Jochem. Okay gang, so in the last video, we dove into the wonderful world of directing groups. We saw how if you have an atom directly attached to your benzene ring and it's electronegative and has electrons, it will lend those electrons into your benzene ring it causes resonance and it causes resonance such that negative charges are put on the ortho and para positions so that you can have an ortho para director and constantly you know on the other side of that coin we saw that if you had some type of atom that was partially positive or you know something that was going to suck electrons out of your ring uh, it would cause positive charges on the ortho para positions thus being a meta director so i just want to have one more video to talk you know briefly review that but also talk about how different groups can activate and deactivate your rings through resonance which we did talk about in the previous video but also by induction and uh one little exception okay so let's take a look so just to put what i was saying out loud uh in words on the board for example if we had this methoxy group, right? Just an O-methyl on our benzene ring. You would tell me this is an electron donating group and we could draw the resonance for this structure where I could swing these electrons in right there. I'd have to bounce electrons up like this. This would create, let me use my beautiful red marker, a partial negative, or, you know, it would create a negative charge right here. So, you know, given the overall hybrid, we're gonna have partial negative charges here, here and here because in resonant, the various resonance structures will actually have a negative charge there. We'll actually have a negative charge here and we'll have a negative charge there as well. So to actually put some more terminology to this, so this is an electron donating group and you can say, you know, we, we know it's an ortho para director and what we can also say is it directs ortho para via, you know, its resonance, right? And also what I want to say, you know, we know we're putting negative charges here, here, and here. This oxygen, you know, while it's not the biggest fan of that positive charge, it's okay with putting its electron density into the ring. So it's an ortho para director and since we know this is EAS, electrophilic aromatic substitution, these benzene rings, right, for the next reaction, we're actually putting more negative charge into our ring, and EAS means we're grabbing positive stuff. So this ring is going to be better at attaching the next, you know, uh, group in an EAS reaction. So not only are we directing ortho para, but we are activating the benzene ring, and that is also done through resonance. Okay, cool. So. Uh, another thing that we talked about, for example, if I was going to draw another example that we definitely saw or maybe you've seen something like this on one of the worksheets. If I had this structure, right, what I want, want you to see is the group, you know, the atom directly attached to our benzene ring. That's a carbonyl carbon. It does not have electrons. It's actually partially positive itself. And in fact, if we did the resonance and evaluated it, we would take electrons out of our benzene ring and we kick them up here. You can almost say we're taking electrons out there and the method by which we're doing it is resonance, right? And the resonance works its way such that we've a pos uh, you know, we do have a positive charge here, here and there, but obviously in the overall resonance hybrid, they're partial charges. So remember, we know this is a meta director. I'll use M. It's a meta director and that happens through resonance. Okay. And because we're actually taking electrons out of the ring, right? We're, the ring is less negative as a result of this group. So we actually deactivate the ring and that occurs via resonance, okay? Now, the new thing that I want to talk about that I failed to mention in the last video. So if you were wondering where it was, I'm so sorry I forgot it, but made this other video, served as a little review, so I think it's a win-win. So if we take a look at this structure down here, right? What, we, what I did not talk about in the previous video was the lovely halogens, right? So this covers fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and if you have an iodine somewhere on a ring, covers this too. So, as you can see, following our rule, this is the exception, right? The resonance works its way out just like it does with a methoxy group, right? This is definitely an electron donating, or, you know, it donates electrons via resonance, right? So I'm gonna say via resonance, we can see the resonance works its way out such that we are an ortho, we, are, we direct ortho para for subsequent EAS reactions, AKA the next EAS reaction, right? We can swing these in, we can kick these up. What you'll see is a partial negative, you know, cause you'll have negative charges on the ring and the various resonance structures. So in the overall hybrid, they're partial charges. However, okay, in terms of activating and deactivating the ring, I'm gonna write this in red, halogens, halogens, slightly deactivate.
your benzene ring. So if you have a halogen on there, it's actually a little less reactive than if you just had a regular old benzene ring. Here's the reason why. And I know you might gripe about oxygen being electronegative in this explanation, but hear me out. So the halogens, right, they are all electronegative. They don't like to share their electrons. So in fact, and this, you know, you might remember this from our acid base days when we saw fluorine having the inductive effect. Inductively speaking, so the resonance does work this way, and that's why we direct ortho pair with the halogens. However, I'm gonna erase these right here. The halogens are so electronegative, and they hate sharing electrons because they are so close to being isoelectric with a, you know, a noble gas. All right, strike that, forget I said that. They hate sharing electrons, so inductively, they will suck electrons out of the ring due to their electronegativity and the fact that they don't like to share. They hate positive, you know, they have to have a positive charge. They hate that. So because of induction, right? So, you know, this was activating the ring via resonance, deactivating the ring via resonance. This deactivates the ring via induction, okay? So that's key. It's a different method by which our activation slash deactivation occurs. So the halogens, they direct orthopara, the resonance is still valid. Don't think that that differs at all. However, it's just the fact that they are so dang electronegative and they hate sharing that they actually suck electron density out of the ring just by being attached. So they take electrons out of the ring. You know, it doesn't change where they direct to, but it changes the reactivity of the ring they are attached to, okay? So halogens slightly deactivate. So it's not nearly as bad as a group that just deactivates. It's just a slight deactivation, okay? So what I wanna do is also do this. Because last but not least, before I, I want to show some examples just to round this video out, last but not least, you can have some type of alkyl group. I want to talk about that. It could be a T-butyl group. Heck, it could be an isopropyl group. Heck, it could even just be a CH3. I'm just talking about a pure alkyl group. So something you would get after a free cross alkylation, for example. So these also direct orthopara. And you might be wondering why. I may, I may have even said it in the last video just to know it, but they direct orthopara. There's no resonance, as you can see, right? So they're orthopara directing. They slightly activate the ring, okay? They slightly activate. So it's not gonna make your ring crazy reactive. It's gonna make it a little bit more reactive. Why? Well, via, and you may not have thought about this for a while, hyperconjugation, right? It's via the fact that these single bonds are gonna be rotating. They're gonna be parallel with the P orbitals in the ring. There's gonna be a slight type of mimicking pi bond interaction, a lending of electron density. Point being is that through hyperconjugation, just a regular plain alkyl group slightly activates your ring and directs orthopara. So it's these positions right here that will be activated, you'll direct to, and these reactions will be more favorable. You know, the next EAS reaction will be better. So I know we covered this. That is all valid. Just wanted to talk about the slight deactivation with the halogens that direct orthopara and the slight activation of just regular alkyl groups. They direct orthopara and via hyperconjugation. Okay, gang, I just want to do two examples. Just round out this video. We'll stop talking about directing groups and whatnot. Uh, not that we'll stop using them, but uh, two videos, that's a lot of videos for just one topic. So two problems that I have up my sleeve and we'll wrap it up. Okay, gang, let's crush these two problems, and then close the book, officially focusing wholly on directing groups, activating and deactivating benzene rings. Okay, so if we take a gander here, let's look at the first problem. So we're gonna see something that, at least in my videos, we have not talked about. So if you take a look here, right, this looks familiar. We're gonna be doing, you know, bromination of a benzene ring because we see Br2 and we see that critical catalyst, FeBr3. But if we take a look up here, we're gonna see something weird we're gonna see two benzene rings. So what do we do? Do we brominate them both? Do we brominate one? And this is where your knowledge of not just directing groups, but how the directing groups affect the reactivity of the rings that you have comes into play. So what you need to do is to look at one ring at a time. So look at this, right? So what I want you to see is that right here, this benzene ring right here, off of it, directly off of it, you see an atom with a lone pair Right, so we, it's an electronegative atom with a lone pair. So just looking at this, what I will hope you're thinking is this can absolutely donate its electrons to the ring. We can draw resonance. So over on this side, we have an ortho pair director and it's going to activate the benzene ring via resonance, okay? That's what I hope, you know, based on now what we've talked about together, that's what I hope in your mind you would see. 
Now, if we look at the other side of the ring, right, directly off of the benzene ring, we see a partially positive carbonyl carbon. It's going to be sucking electrons out of the benzene ring. I hope you would see this resonance would be happening, right? So in fact, this ring over here would be a meta director, but more importantly, that group directly off of it deactivates the ring via resonance, okay? So this is a type of problem I've seen so frequently where you just have to look at each ring and what's directly attached to the ring. It's so easy to just take it all in, but you just have to look at one side at a time and what's directly off of a ring. So I have all these arrows. Let me clean this up because we're making it confusing by drawing all this stuff while I'm in. So I hope we would both agree that because of this group being, you know, donating its electron density to the ring, activating it here, this is the more reactive benzene ring. This is where we're going to brominate. Once you've made that distinction, this is the ring you're working on. I want you just to view this entire thing over here as one giant group. Okay. So when we're going to brominate on this benzene ring, we have an ortho pair director, and I hope what you're thinking is this thing is so dang huge. We are certainly not going to direct ortho. We're going to go para, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this benzene ring, which is really just decoration because we know the more reactive ring is the one that I'm now about to draw, and I need to direct para to this, which is over here, and that's where the bromine goes, okay? So let's do another one. So if we look down here, right, same deal, but I kind of just, instead of putting like the directing groups in between the rings, they're on the ends. So again, just look at each ring by itself because, you know, they're both attached to a benzene ring, right? So that's kind of equal. So if I cover this one up, you can see over here, we have a halogen. And remember, while these direct ortho para, we know inductively they deactivate slightly, right? Induct inductively, Diac, I'll just put Diac and then I'll put slightly, okay? And then if I put my attention over here, aha, now you're seeing a methoxy group, right? This is a strong electron donating group. It does ortho para via res, you know, based on the, how the resonance works out, but we know this activates the ring via resonance, right? So not unlike the other side where we have deactivation via induct and the inductive effect, we have activation via resonance. So I would hope what you're thinking is, this is the ring we are going to perform our Friedel Crafts alkylation on, okay? And again, at this point in time, this thing is just a giant group. This is the strongest directing group we have. It's calling the shots. So obviously this is an ortho para director. We can't direct para to it because this position's occupied. So we have to go ortho. So it doesn't matter because of symmetry, but we're gonna direct to either one of these positions right there, right? Because we can't go para, because para, sterically, is our best option always, right? So, let me just redraw this first, because you're probably seeing that I snuck in a carbocation shift in my Friedel Crafts alkylation, because remember when you do your Friedel Crafts alkylation, you look at this, you look at the carbon attached to the chlorine, you at first must generate the carbocation, but then you can look for shifts. So this thing will shift over here. So remember, really the thing you'll be sticking on that the benzene will be attaching to is that tertiary carbocation, right? After you get the hydride shift, I'll do H minus to signify hydride shift. So I will be putting a T-butyl group right here. But remember, I also could have put the T-butyl group at that other ortho position as well. And if that Friedel Crafts alkylation seems unfamiliar, Go back to the benzene mechanism video. I know it's 30 minutes long and there's all the mechanisms in one, but I wanted to do that to make sure you saw that they're all the same. So just find the uh, Friedel Crafts alkylation part. Okay, gang. So I have some uh, problems that specifically exploit this on the worksheet. So make sure you hammer those. Don't, uh, I feel like this isn't the most difficult concept. So don't have all your hard work where you've learned all these EAS reactions go to waste with just not remembering, you know, that halogens slightly deactivate via induct the inductive effect and, um, you know, remember alkyl groups act slightly activate via an inductive effect and then all your other resonance knowledge is valid. Okay, gang, thank you for watching this video. Uh, so stoked that you're using Joe Chem. Uh, I hope to see you all in the next video.